months of subtle hints dropped around the office, which very quickly devolved into passive aggressive comments about the fact that I've not yet been invited onto this prestigious program. It took any Petrillo gallivanting throughout Europe for me to finally get the invite to One Nation, presented by Tony Bet Jordan Wilson. You were passive aggressive from the beginning. <laughs> um, never you not started, been. yeah, you started. <laughs> like it would be nice to get an invite. I said, buddy, I, I just started to work. We here. just I'm taped still the pilot. On probation. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I would like to maybe get my my feet wet a little bit before uh, before I'm, I'm bringing in my friends. But happy to have you, brother. I always love talking footy with you, but now we can do it on a nice little podcast. Yeah, we can do this for your listening and visual pleasure as well. Maybe more so the first one than the second one, especially when <laughs> I'm around. I wanted to wear the hat normally, by the way, but there's shadows and it was just the whole thing. So we're going nah, with this. This is the look, the mystique. It works. Today. It absolutely works. And we had a busy weekend. You and I worked together a lot and we had CPL. Of course, there's Women's World's Cup final. We're going to get to all of that today. Um, but I've, I'm looking at the rundown that is prepared by our producer here. So in case you didn't know, hosts don't actually think for themselves. We just <laughs> read things and ask I mean, a little bit. We, we, we tweak things from... There, time there's, time. there's some tweaking from here there in, in more ways than one. Uh, but I'm being asked, Jordan, to ask you if you have any advice for me as I try to fill for Annie Petrillo in the multiple Canadian Screen Awards that she's won. So what I will say, Andy's going to give me uh, an ear for when she comes back, mm -hmm. but we like to sing on the show a little bit. Kay. So I feel like if anything comes to mind, if there's any song or anything I say or you say and you feel like this is a, a, a moment or a lyric, belt it out. I will say Andy never really belts it out on key, mm. but I love the energy. So you gotta match that. And the, yeah, let's just have some fun talking about footy. The energy I can bring. Okay. The singing I, I won't. You don't have you don't have octaves. No, listen, if we're going to a karaoke bar and you get me maybe one beer deep, I'll go country karaoke with you any night that you want. But it's just not country music is not the vibe for football as I've learned very it quickly. Is not. Despite me trying my best to get Lucas McNaughton in to the Nashville scene and get to some country <laughs> bars. It's just not working, but we're going to get there. And we will also talk about Lucas McNaughton and Nashville as seen a little bit. But let's start with the CPL, mainly because it's the only thing that's in my brain because we just had four days of it. Four matches, three days, it feels like four months. We're almost at that point of the season. Everyone has got 20 games in the books now, Jordan Wilson. Mm -hmm. th there are a lot of different directions we can go for this, but let's start with the couch that is just off in the background here, where I was fully ready to have the post-mortem, put the, fl the Forge logo, flip it upside down, and have the chaotic what has gone wrong. But in true Forge fashion, they play miserably, and yet they get one moment, and that's all it takes to get, a point. to get the point. And that's keeping them very much in the title race. So let's start with Forge. It this is the team, I think, that polarizes more CPL supporters than anyone. It's starting to polarize within the One Soccer Studios as well. Where you think they are in terms of the race. You are still quite high on them. You I and am. Christian Jack very much were not ready to take some of the air out of the proverbial beach ball that is this <laughs> Forge team. And yet, I am on the other side of that spectrum. So why don't I let you start? Because I've been talking a lot for the first three No, I like it. I like that you come in and you do your Adam Jenkins. You are Mr. CPL. You're the voice. You, you can talk about CPL all that you want, buddy. This is, your, this is your league. This is your time. I'll say this about Forge. They haven't played their best. I mean, think near close to the best. Maybe six out of ten regularly. And they still have 31 points. Mm -hmm. There's still two from the top. What I've learned from watching the CPO in 2019 and 2020 and then playing in it in 2021 and 2022, you cannot count out Forge and Bobby Smirniotis. When it's a must-win match or two matches you got to win or the last matches of the season, Forge always show their best. That's their masterclass moment. That's the time where they, they rise to the top. So I can't count them out. And it almost even back, backs up my point a little bit more that they played this horribly, we'll say. They haven't played their best. And 31 points, and they're just right under there, under Calvary with, with 33, and right under Pacific and Atletico. Pacific have 32, Atletico have 31. So, I don't know. I mean, I think a loss against Halifax this weekend would have had me a bit nervous in terms of backing them and putting them first. But I, I still think, I still think they'll be there at the top at the end of the season. This is the misconception that I think I'm getting from a lot of my coworkers here. You being one of them, Christian Jack being another, Oliver Plata. I'll throw everyone who's often on camera with us. That they're not understanding that I'm not saying Forge is a bad football team. No. They're still in the I first I don't think tier. you're saying that. But what's, what's causing some controversy is the fact that I'm saying there are tiers in this league. There's the first tier. 
there's the middle tier, and then there's Valor and Vancouver right now, unfortunately for those two sides, and that's a conversation for later. Forge are in the first tier, but they are the bottom of that first tier. So where, where, does, that, where does that put Forge for you in the, the 28th game of the season? Where are they? The 28th game of the season? Well, and it's interesting, too, because they've got that, they still have that extra game in hand, and they will until, like, the third last week of the season. I'm waiting for them to show me, like, two performances in a row. That's what's missing for me. It's the fact that they're not going out. First of all, they're not scaring anybody anymore, which I think is natural for the fact that this league is half a decade old now. Forge and Cavalry had that sort of head start on the rest of the pack with Sigma, with Foothills, et cetera. What Forge has done is a literal dynasty, and it, it, it is nothing to do with the past resume. I was really worried when Bobby Smyrniotis, almost unprompted last year, came out and said, I think in this league you have a two to three year window and we're extending it a little bit. And then they make one change in the offseason, bringing in uh, Mendricard James to replace Dan Kretzen, who left them um, for greener pastures or a new challenge for him. Benny Badibanga comes in, and we'll talk about his goal as well. But that's it. So for a roster that Bobby already kind of forewarned was getting stale or outside their window, that's the big problem for me is that they're still playing stale. They've looked bored at times. They've looked complacent at times. And with everyone else underneath them getting better, I truly think Cavalry is a better team than them right now. Atletico Ottawa is a better team than them right now. Pacific is a better team than them right now. And then Halifax, just because they're so young, I'm not ready to say they're better than Forge. Okay. But right now, Forge are the fourth best team in the CPL for me. So talk to me quickly about the tiers, because this is very intriguing. Yes. I was going to ask you a similar question, but you already brought it up. So talk to me about the tiers. You said there's a top tier, the middle tier, and the bottom tier. And you put two teams already in the bottom tier. We won't go over it again. Fine, I'll, I'll, you so that means that there's, you that there's six eight. teams and there's two tiers. Talk to me about the there's two three tiers. tiers. There's three tiers. Sorry. I'll just two, go, I'll, two tiers left. I'll, I'll go through one through eight for you. Okay. Right now it is Cavalry. It as the best team as in the, the best team in the CPL. And, as and my after every team titles. plays 28 games. Yes. Cavalry will be number one. Yes. Okay. Cavalry, Pacific, Atletico Ottawa, Forge, Halifax, York, I'm not even convinced about Valor after calling the last two games, and then Vancouver. That's so one through where, eight. Where's tier two? Where does that begin? Is tier that two fourth, begins fifth? after Forge. So fifth. Yes. And that is Halifax. Yes. And then you get York United in there because they've been decimated by injuries and now red cards. They're in the, if they made the playoffs, I'd be like, yeah, they, they had to scrap and claw for it, but it doesn't fully surprise me. You don't feel confident. Me. Correct. And then the bottom tier is just, I'm ready to put Valor in Vancouver. And, and you're telling me right now, yes. after history, that Forge is a fourth place team. Yes. After, after everyone's played 28 games. Yes. For, for, because I want to put money on this. I, I, I'm happy to do that. I'm already losing a really bad bet to the director of this show about Vancouver <laughs> making the playoffs. I clearly am financially irresponsible. <laughs> my, my biggest thing, and I'll, and I'll leave it here because we're already going heavy on this, and this is what Forge will do in CPL conversations. I saw this from Forge about a month before the playoffs last year. I didn't think they were going to win the North Star Shield. I'll be the first one to say that. And you make a really good point that what Forge have that other teams don't is that battle-tested big match mentality by going through CONCACAF League, by getting that taste of Champions League, by winning the North Star Shields. I, I think it's a different conversation, and Tommy Wilden Jr. would agree with me. Regular season is the big show, and it is now in the CPL with the trophy. The playoffs are a cup competition. It's a tournament. And Forge, for me, based on their ability to win big games, are able to win the whatever it is going to be called cup because I know that that's <laughs> being announced soon um, and versus the regular season. I don't think they're that team. I like it. Okay, we'll, we'll flip. We'll flip. For, we'll flip by this and we'll talk about Calvary because yes. you put them number one. Yes. A lot of people have them at number one. They're talking about their their promising football they're playing. People have asked. I've asked Ali Musi to step up. He seems to be doing that week in and week out. There's, they're playing a different style. They're combining their, their rough housing that they normally do with a bit of, a bit of football now. Mm -hmm. Tommy Wilden Jr. has them galvanized, ready to go. Fair. My question to you is, we've seen in the history of Calvary, when it comes to crunch time, for whatever reasons, it could be referees, is the ball in or out. When it comes to that split second or that, that game where you have to beat your chest and, and be proud, and I don't want to use the term man up, but be big, they fail. Is this the season that they finish number one and then also host the final? Host the final is the big one. And I think a lot of it has to do with the way the playoffs are worked, where if you finish first in the regular season, you don't automatically get to host the final. 
the second place team could beat you in that game and it would send you back into the playoff gauntlet and then the second place team could host the final then. This is the, the one remaining thing for me with Cavalry. I, in, I'm in a show of making big declarations. Cavalry are winning a trophy this year. I don't know as my- I, I bet you at that as well. Yeah, I'd Cavalry are winning a trophy this year. Whether that's the regular season, whether that is the playoffs, they are winning one of them. I think it's going to be the regular season and then that's gonna take a little bit of the pressure off them for the playoff time and maybe, maybe without having those glorious expectations, is this the year, will we finally win a trophy? If they go into the playoffs already with the trophy, I think they can play loose and a little bit more relaxed, but I'm still not sure that this group is able to come into those big matches, those big win or go home type of matches and progress. I, I'm not as sold on them there yet. So I'll let you go again. Why not Pacific? Because well, everyone's talking about how they've, they've had this long run in first place. I don't have them in first, but why, what's your reason for them not being at the top? They were until about three weeks ago and watching them fail to be ruthless and seeing James Merriman progressively get more and more frustrated in his post-match media availabilities. I get to work with the coaches a lot. I'm very lucky in that sense where I get to text with them, I get to call them and just get like general vibe checks from them. And every now and then I notice changes in patterns where you, you get the mantras and the, the cliches from all of them, they're coaches, that's what they do. But when you start to see changes from one game at a time, one game at a time to, okay, this is, this is going well, we're not taking our foot off the gas and I'm not accusing Pacific of doing that, but then they get a really bad run of results. And then all of a sudden you're wondering, why can't this team score? They still, I think it was until this weekend, had the most goals in the CPL. Why can't this team score goals? And then to hear James make comments like, we're not ruthless enough in the final third. We need our attacking players to want to score goals more than they do. And then you watch a performance. That was a Derby, Jordan. And they're missing some decently sized names from that team, missing their captain, Josh Hurd, who I think has somehow become the glue guy for that team. He has been the perfect replacement for Jamar Dixon. They are missing that, I'm gonna get in your face, I'm gonna pull your shirt, I'm gonna be a pain in the you-know-what to play against, and then I'm gonna score goals for fun. Because you contrast the two games. The last time they went to Willoughby, they won 6-3. It was a league record for goals. They could not, for the life of them, score, and it's taking their center backs to consistently do it. They're just missing that ruthlessness. They need to believe that they're the best team in the league. And when they have that self-belief and play loose and play fun, I think that they can win a trophy still. I just, I'm, after what I've seen the last two weeks, I don't think that they are the top dogs. Do you agree? Or do you I agree disagree? with you. I agree right with you in the terms that I've been saying, well, I say that they don't have any killers or they don't have a killer up top. Um, and you saying they're not ruthless, that's, that's, that's a synonym for, for me. That's pretty close. Um, and yeah, it's, it's similar to, to Calvary in, in terms of throughout the season, they're playing good football. And I'll say Calvary in the past, because this season I, I've been back at them a little bit. I've seen uh, uh, a new, new Calvary for them, but it's all about those last games. That's when you really see. Like at this point in the CPL, everyone's even, everyone has good days or everyone has their flows or they're winning two on the bounce or they lose a bit or they lose a game they should win. That's probably Pacific's um, fortune this past, or not fortune, misfortune this, uh, this past weekend. But you can kind of see that that happens. But when it comes down to the last match, we'll see. I'm talking about Pacific not having killers. We'll see if someone steps up, if it's Angaro, Adonijah Reed. Genero Daniels, like who comes up and, and, and steps up big for, for these sides. But I think these names that we're bringing up, we got to just quickly talk about Halifax Wanderers and like where they've come from, mm -hmm. what they're doing now, because you have them at fifth. Yes. They're not further because you can't have them beating Forge. You don't think they're a better squad. But just talk about Halifax and where you feel like they could be uh, going into a playoff run. Halifax can win the playoffs. Hmm. And I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be stunned. They are that team. It's they because of the, so, you feel like, hope, like them at, at Wanderers Ground. That, that is the most pitch. important thing. I don't think they're winning the regular season title. I don't think they're ready for that just yet. But if they can host a game and get the momentum, and if they are going to Atletico Ottawa, who knows? That could be a final. That Halifax group is going to go with them. So does this have anything to do with this beautiful jersey behind you right there? No. That you're backing Halifax? Absolutely just not. just because you watch every game and you're like, you've seen them grow and you think that they're ready. L listen, I, I've said this around the office. I'll say this on camera. I am not above bribery. I can be bought. 
And obviously, I'm very grateful. I can't believe you brought it in. I wanted you to bring it. See, it was supposed to be a fit. <laughs> and then you're like, no, I, I left the house early. Sorry, I didn't bring my jerseys. It was supposed to be a funny thing where you had your match jerseys. I like this, though. Ones. This is very diva. This is like, the jerseys are great. I'm filling in for Petrillo. I, I love understood it. the this assignment. Is something, yeah, this is something chills would do for sure. But I love it. Great jerseys, by the way, as well. So, yes. So, so because I think we're going to give our producer an aneurysm by being heavy so early. We Quickly, Halifax Wanderers, they can win the, they can win the playoffs. I think as Daniil Henry gets more fit, as Joao Morelli gets more fit, I still want to see them try a 3-5-2 once, just for my sake. It won't be a deep team if they do that, but I think it'd be an incredibly exciting. Fernandez has been unbelievable. Timoteo has been unbelievable. And you have four or five guys who can play in midfield. I think that they are going to be a problem in the playoffs. I don't, I'm not going to put money on them winning anything this year because it's still their first year. I would put money on Patrice Geyser winning coach of the year. Sorry, Forge fans. Wow. Um, and, and that, that's just the vibes takes. here. See, uh, there's some foreshadowing there, though, with the 3-5-2, because probably they have to switch mm -hmm. things up going into the, the playoffs. So There is some foreshadowing, and we will leave the, the CPL conversation here before we move on to Messi and World Cup. Ali Bass is the best player in the CPL, right? Right now? I mean, Kyle Becker gives him a, a shout as well. It's, I mean, it's, it's Ali Bassett. It's a, it's a, it's a two-man race for the midfielders, for sure. He has 10 goals from midfield. If you're, if you're a football fan and you're watching, Forge is literally sixth without Kyle Becker. He is playing sublime. Yes, Ali Bassett is playing well. He's scoring goals, and that's what people are talking about, making a difference. But if you look at their games, very similar in terms of how they're, they're changing the momentum of games. But I still think it's a two-man race. I don't think it's Ali Bassett's in the bag yet. I, I'm, I'm close. Like, obviously, the, we need to see how the season finishes. Like, if Forge misses, ba Becker's not even getting a vote. If Atletico Ottawa fall off a cliff, they're not getting a vote. But what's been the complaint with Atletico Ottawa the past 18 months and by some pundits on this network? Uh, I, I never complained about Athletic Ottawa. I, I, I said like some the way, pundits. I like the way that they play. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that they kind of go about their business. They're a bit mundane is the word I'll say. I like mundane. Mundane. You know, is, but, but who's not mundane right now? Who is not mundane in Winnipeg right now? I mean, it was a great game. We called I, it. I struggle with this. Yeah, <laughs> it was you, a great he, game. Ian Humo's you big time. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great game. Throw that in there. Um, here's, the th here's the thing with Ottawa right now for me. If Bassett's out of that team, they're nowhere right now. I think they're still frail enough defensively that they're nowhere right now because they're dealing with some injuries this year. And it's weird to say frail defensively, but in that, that will be their fallback. That's, we're going to grind out every single game. It will be properly 2022 Ottawa. When I think about best player in the league and MVP, I take the V part of that really, that's not a V, this is a V. I take the V <laughs> part of that really seriously. <laughs> Who is the most valuable player to his team? And it's Ollie Bassett right now and it's not close. But it's, Becker is having his best season, it's, I agree. It's an argument that I can't really argue against heavily in terms of backing Kyle Becker um, because Ollie Bassett, literally the valuable part, he's just been taking over games. And that goal contribution as a midfielder, as an eight or a 10 or whatever you want to call him, mm. The fact that he's scoring this this many goals and is at the top of the table for for goals, it's it's sublime. He's also just a little brat right now. And I like I love it. Every like the celebrations he's going, he's like this after his free kick, and I'm like, he's enjoying no his notes, football. Ollie. No <laughs> notes. <laughs> Where are we going uh, next? Speaking of greats, Lionel Messi has won another trophy, and League's Cup has captivized, polarized, done a lot for Major League Soccer. They could not have asked for a better tournament from the storyline perspective and bringing as many people under the tent. They are just, ex they're stretching that tent, the top of it, as big as they can to fit everybody in to get some eyeballs on Major League Soccer, to get some eyeballs on Liga MX. Lionel Messi and Inter Miami and Kamal Miller, for that, re for that matter, have gone on and won League's Cup. Did this tournament surprise you? Were you more engaged in it than you thought you would be? Or were you just all about the messy show? Because that's going to be the most curious thing for me into next year's tournament, if it's going to have the same momentum when Messi's been here for a while. I think, I think the Leagues Cup is a, is a great idea. And I think next season, it will have a, a profound impact on the clubs. This year, I was watching for Messi. Mm -hmm. I was watching into Miami. I was watching this guy just take over the game. And honestly, pinching myself, I'm like, is this real? I'm like, is the best player in the world still, for me, the best player in the world, the GOAT. You can argue, you can say Pele, you can say other names, Mary Maradona, it's, but, it's, it's but, Messi now. but Messi is like, <laughs> for him to be playing uh, in North America, and the, loving North America. Loving that's, it. That's the most, he might have Look, that tourism Saudi Arabia deal, but he's literally just spouting how much he loves Miami right now. There, are tells, loving there are tells in football, right? And you can see on the pitch, but you can also see off the pitch. His beautiful wife and his kids are enjoying oh, gosh, their yeah. time. 
PSG, I would pants him when he's on the bench, when he's coming off. Miserable. Mm. Miserable, miserable, miserable. He is, welcome to Miami. Like, every time he is out there, you could just sing. He is enjoying it. He has his boy now in Busquets. You he's know that they're super, bar- He's doing superhero goal celebrations that for That man kids. is having fun. This is what you want to see. So, for me, League's Cup, into Miami, anytime they're playing, all eyes on Messi. And I'm just so glad he's here because we just we needed someone like this, this figure, to just take uh, the MLS and just North American soccer to a different level. Yeah, he, he is going to be. And that's like I remember some of the chats back in the day when you would have big names. You talk about Pelis and Maradonas. So many North American clubs in the past would try and bring some in and be like, hey, grow the game for us. And it just didn't feel like soccer in North America was ready to become football in North America. And I think, and obviously there's recency bias and everyone's on the messy wave and it's impossible not to be, but he's going to be that guy for this sport in this country. For everything they're trying to do with Major League Soccer and, and the World Cup coming up in 2026, Messi is going to have such an impact. And now he has another title, another jewel for his crown. I have been told that this is a recurring segment. I don't know if this is true. It is. Okay. We've done this a couple times. We're waiting for sound effects and theme music. I will say Andy cheats heavily when we play this yeah, game. Yeah, I'm not going to cheat. This is our box of surprises as it is appropriately labeled and designed. And we're going to play a game with Lionel Messi. It's quite simple. It is called Has Messi Won This? Can you reach that? I, absolutely not. I'm right five foot six and oh, I have a broken that shoulder blade. So that's right probably, no, that, that, that will work there. there. Yeah, that yeah, will yeah, work yeah, right yeah. there. So it is our One Nation box of surprises. It's a really simple game. They kept it simple for me. They understand how to, how to do these bits with me. I'm going to draw out a card and then Jordan's going to draw out a card. And we're just going to ask the question, has Messi won this? Yes or no? You want to go first? That's very kind of you. Thank you. I would. Normally at that point I say ladies I'm to make go first. I can't do it. Joe's is there, but I'm just saying. I'm I, and I put it upside down. We're off to a great start. Has Lionel Messi won this, Jordan Wilson? Tell me. La Coupe de France. Yes. No. What? Eh. Big X. Family feud style X Man. on the screen. That's one. Because I, I don't know as much as I thought I did. <sighs> okay, has Messi won this? Champion for peace and sport. That absolutely sounds like something they'd give Lionel Messi, yes. <laughs> That's good. One nil. <laughs> I'm like, you won that? What, what, what is like, this what? obscure thing like, that sounds what is like that? the Nobel Prize? I gotta look up Coupe de France after as well. Has Lionel Messi won this, the FIFA World Youth Championship? No. Yes. Wilson's over two. This is wild. Let's go. He I'm won that with Argentina? I mean, he didn't win it for Canada. Man, he could have played for Spain too, so I'm like. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Has Messi won all of these? All of these, okay, yes. that's important. I'm gonna make a note. La Liga, La Liga. Copa del Rey, mm-hmm. UEFA Champions League, mm-hmm. Supercopa de España, mm-hmm. UEFA Super Cup, mm-hmm. FIFA Club World Cup, all in the same calendar year. In the same. That's what I have to preface. There's been on some, he's been on some real. You gotta answer fast, Poppy, you can't take too long. Um, in the same calendar year makes, yes. 2 0 Jenkins. Let's go. What, what kind of game is this, bro? Has I'm always losing. This, this format, the, the cards are just the size of the box. It's gonna make it for some awkward pulls. <laughs> Has Lionel Messi won this, the most important for any men's footballer, Olympic gold? He has not. Yes, he has. No, he hasn't. <laughs> you are really bad at this. Wait, when did he win this? What year? Can, uh, yeah, if, if the producer's nah, on this, this is we need a fact check. Yes. He won it? He oh, he might have. Well, no, he did. That's what the card says. The oh. box of surprises doesn't lie to you. Three you nil. Know, I've won and, the game, but I think there's Ollie, one left. But hold on, let me see this. I don't want you to annihilate. Can we go clean sweep? Okay, has Messi won this? Please just say People's La Liga. Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive. Oh. No, I'm gonna say no. Yeah, well, you're right. Why don't I get these <laughs> questions? That, that's easy, because Messi ain't sexy. This is, hey, hey, hey now, not, hey, hey now. not sexy. Some Messi, short. Ain't, Messi ain't sexy. It's not because he's short. The bearded short king gets it's not, some love it's not from your boy. It has nothing to do with stature. So, 2008 oh, gold medal. That come was, on. Was that Athens? Well, I'm in grade 11 that time, and um, I probably should have known that. I was 12 years old. So there's you that. Boy. There's that dude. I am. All right, let's talk about the Women's World Cup. Women's World Cup. Speaking of things that Messi has not won, <laughs> the Women's World Cup, because he's not allowed. Uh, but it is come and gone, and it is England, the Lionesses, falling to La Roja in the final. Mm. I'm going to hear about that attempt at a Spanish pronunciation in about five minutes. It wasn't my best. You rolled it. It was okay. <sighs> That's the problem when you're French, is you, you roll your R's, it's a whole thing. But it is Spain who wins by a goal to nil. The dream story for the Lionesses 
comes up short. Still the European champions and now the world finalists. Nothing to discredit the run that they've been on the past couple of years. You can ask the question, were they missing too many bodies? Were there too many key players absent from that team? Mary Erbs was unbelievable. My favorite, the, the penalty and just telling everyone in the world to go, you know what, themselves was just, it was fantastic. I love the passion, I love the intensity. Now that it is gone, and for many football diehards, especially women's football supporters, and there are many who watch just about every minute of this tournament, and it was an exceptional tournament. Aside from your sleep schedule going back to normal, which is not the case for you because you have a little one, what what is going to be your lasting memory, your big takeaway from this tournament? Um, a few things. I think with Spain, we'll start there. First of all, it's very reminiscent in some regards to 2010, 2010 yep. for the men's, just in terms of like dominating football, like taking over games, playing a certain brand in every single game. That's what Spain did. And we talked about it. Producer, handsome Ollie Platt said this game. Well, is one of those be, things is true. Um, producer, tall, <laughs> handsome, gorgeous, smart Ollie Platt yeah, that's said. Bad. Thank you. That's that's all of it, no? Yeah, that's um, he said this is gonna be a game of England's defense against Spain's attack. And I think Spain got it right yep. in terms of just the way that they went about their business going forward. Like players coming in to get the ball, breaking lines. Also the goal that was scored by Olga Carmona, that was like a left back getting high up the pitch, uh, hard and low, far post, winning one nil, and then just kind of not locking up shot, but just taking care of the game. Um, so, so yeah, professional, professional uh, performance from from Spain from from top to bottom. I think they deserved it. I think that's a big thing. But then for me, also, it's an end of an era for Rapinho, mm -hmm. for Marta, for Christine Sinclair. I know she hasn't retired yet, but I, I don't see her playing in, in 2027 for for Canada. Wherever that World Cup may be. Um, yeah. So, but then also the birth of a, of some new stars. Mm. Linda Casado for Colombia yeah. was just yep. just a beauty to watch, and you think that she's only eighteen. The, the, the flair <laughs> that she plays football, confidence, with. like it's yeah, it's crazy. Um, you think that Lauren James as well. I know she got sent off, but her brother has said that she could be she's better than some Premier League players as well, and she's only twenty one. Um, yeah, just big names coming up. Perlewello as well for uh, for Spain. Huge name. So I'm just excited to see see these players in four years' time. Yeah, I think for me, and, and we just mentioned a little bit with Messi and how it's going to be like that tournament, that moment that changes things. I really think for worldwide football, this is what they needed. They needed the World Cup to succeed when they added more teams. I think a lot of people worried about diluting, putting too many poor nations in there. There were going to be some unbelievable 10, 12, 14 mil results. We just didn't have that. We had great stories. Colombia made a great run. Jamaica against all odds made a great run. We had big dogs Morocco. like Canada, like the USA, falling flat on their face and breaking their nose and maybe chipping a few teeth in the process. Not wow. good. That was very, that was really graphic. No, my teeth hurt when you said it. I'm yeah. so sorry about that. But that, that's how, that's how what it was. It was not a good tournament for North America. It was really good for Africa. It was was amazing for Europe again as it was a European final but it's going to be one of those where the momentum is finally going the prize money is getting to where it ought to be and a lot of it is based on not just hey pay us it's pay us and this is why you should pay us look at these stadiums look at the conversations look at the type of football we're playing and what I and it's little subtleties and nuances that I notice in years past in the media general media even from whatever made up football media the seven people that were in it in Canada back at the last one <laughs> was women's world cup mm. Just the World Cup. You know, we're talking about the World Cup right now. Yeah. It's little things like that that make a difference. It's just football at the end of the day, and what a tournament it was. And now, because of the the very violent chipped tooth reference I just made, we have to talk about how Canada learns from this. Where do they go from here? Are there lessons from Spain and England you think that they can take to try and make sure, A, they get into the Olympics, and B, they get into 2027? Yeah, I think so. I think for me, the biggest thing I'll take away, if you're, if you're a Canadian fan or just a Canadian uh, players getting ready for this window as well, because that, that's a huge thing as well against Jamaica. I think just having a clear identity of how you want to play and maybe tweaking things as they come. But when I'm looking at the finals and I'm looking even at the semifinals, all four teams, but we'll just talk about the two that made the finals in Spain and England, mm -hmm. had a clear identity of how they wanted to play. Mm -hmm. um, and that was ingrained in them. In training, they're talking about things. You could just see it. It's, it's very bold. Canada, I didn't see that. And I understand there's some injuries. There's so much going on in, in Canadian soccer right now. But I think for me and for you, we're soccer lovers. Mm -hmm. And I want to see a team going out and saying, I feel confident in our game plan and what we're doing. And this is what Canada needs to get back to, especially if they want to compete in 2027. Because I think their bare bones, they have enough. They have more than enough to 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 compete at that top level. I have like 30 seconds and I'm not gonna be able to fully open this can of worms, but I will say this, Spain was in a big fight with their federation 
Spain hates their coach. They wouldn't hug him, they wouldn't celebrate him. They use that as motivation to do it in spite of people. I'd love to see Canada use that spite and turn it into success as much as it is messaging as well. And that has to start in September when the Olympic qual yeah, the Olympic qualifiers roll well around. Said. Uh, I, I have one more, I have one more. Box of surprise? Three. <laughs> I think it was four, no, actually. Kill me in. <laughs> it was what? four. Will you have me back next week? Yeah. We'll I see will. you then. One Nation Thanks presented by Tony. Thanks for joining us.